Hallelujah. One day we are going to see Jesus. This is our hope. This is our confidence that one day we'll be out of this world and we'll stand to see our king. I don't know the name you are going to call him that day, but I'm going to call him the king of kings, the lord of lords, the lover of my soul. Can you tell your neighbor just one word you are going to tell the king of glory when you see him face to face? What are you going to tell him? Amen. For the biography of our sister and auntie, the media is going to be playing a biography. So please just listen or if you can cite the screen, you can just watch. Thank you. The home call of a glorious soul. Footprints of glorious Auntie Gloria Mwese, a kind-hearted, strong and God-fearing woman whose footprints stay clear in the sands of time. Gloria was a delightful soul, humble, quick to admit her wrongs and apologize for mistakes made. A God fearing woman who though extremely private was able to uniquely spread love and charity with friends especially those less fortunate she also doggedly supported and nurtured young people around her gloria Mwese, fondly called auntie gloria was born on the 28th of september 1963 in lagos nigeria she had a passion for education from a young age attended methodist primary school in oshodi lagos her dedication and hard work paid off she successfully completed her primary education continuing her academic journey gloria enrolled at new era college in benin city for her secondary education she excelled in her studies and graduated in flying colors her exceptional performance opened doors for her to pursue higher education. With a burning desire to become a lawyer, Gloria enrolled at Edo State University, Ekboma, to pursue her LLB degree. As a determined student, she immersed herself in her studies, demonstrated a keen interest in various aspects of law, her dedication and commitment to her studies earned her the respect and admiration of her professors and peers. After completing her LLB, Gloria took the next step in her legal career by attending the Nigerian Law School in Lagos to obtain her Bachelor of Laws. She successfully passed the bar exam and was admitted to the Nigerian Bar Association, officially becoming a practicing lawyer. She gained extensive experience in various areas of law, including corporate law, criminal law, and family law. Her clients praised her for her professionalism, expertise, and dedication to their cases. Auntie Gloria was also a very spiritual woman. She attended the Koinonia Global Ministry under the dynamic leadership of Apostle Joshua Selman. She served as a member of the prayer department where she was fondly called Mama. 
Auntie Gloria assisted as a counselor in the prayer department. She counseled a lot of people, mostly on legal issues. And she passionately served as a legal advisor to the brethren in the prayer department and across the ministry. She was a woman who was committed to serving the people of God in the colonial global ministry and across the Christian community wherever she found herself. Despite her achievements, Gloria felt a deep desire to further expand her knowledge and expertise in the legal field. In pursuit of this goal, she later returned to her alma mater, Edo State University, to pursue her LLB degree. She was determined to enhance her understanding of the law and contribute to the legal community through research and academia. She was the convener and founder of Pink Ray Breast Cancer Foundation, a non-governmental organization NGO created for the awareness of breast cancer in Nigeria. Under her foundation, she reached out to people in Kuchingoro, Abuja, and the Emir's Palace in Zaria, where she put smiles on the faces of people across religious and cultural divides. She worked tirelessly, as if she knew she was about to return to her creator. Tragically, on February 4, 2024, Auntie Gloria Weze passed away. Her untimely demise was a great loss to the legal profession, the academic community, the Christian community, and others. She will be remembered for her passion for law, her commitment to justice, and her unwavering dedication to her clients, students, and the brethren. Gloria Weze's legacy lives on through her contributions to the legal field and her impact on the lives of those she touched. Her determination, intelligence, and compassion continue to inspire aspiring lawyers and legal professionals to strive for excellence against all odds and make a difference in the world of law. For this corruptible must put on in corruption. Today, earth has one gentle soul less and in eternity one angel more. Deep in our hearts, a memory is kept of one we loved and shall never forget. God will link the broken chain as one by one will surely meet again. In our hearts, Auntie Gloria will always stay loved and remembered every day. Her life, a beautiful memory. Her absence, a silent grief. Auntie Gloria, you fell asleep without saying goodbye, but memories of you will never die. Time may pass and fade away, but memories of you will always stay. It's a cluster of memories sprinkled with tears. Wishing God had spared you a few more years. Tenderly, we treasure the past with memories that will always last. Ours is just a simple prayer. God bless and keep you in his care. Adieu, great woman. Adieu, our dear mother and friend of many. Adieu, Auntie Gloria Mweze. Adieu. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom.
the point. If you see me standing up, just know that your time is up. God bless you. Thank you very much. Good evening, every one of us. And I want to say this is a very solemn moment for us, especially those of us who are of the same family membership of, with Sister Gloria. A few things that I have to say in the two minutes I'm giving will not have been necessary at all because uh, the biography that was shown has confirmed one or two things that I want to say here. I met Sister Gloria in 1993, exactly about 31 years ago, which means one year, more than half of the number of years she spent. And how did we meet? She was brought in to meet with me by her bosom legal friend, barrister Ngozi Igwe, who is now Ngozi Musa. And with the kind of person Sister Gloria was, within a short period of time, she had melted with me more than even the Sister Ngozi that brought her. What was our purpose of meeting? She was brought in by Sister Ngozi to help us in one assignment. It was a recruitment exercise for a new company that we floated then, the mortgage firm. And when they came, both of them lawyers, they helped us in the recruitment process. They helped us in the preliminarities that needed to be done as a lawyer. And then they held the first recruitment interview in Lagos in 1993. Let me bring you home. This same company that was being floated involved ownership structure of brother Nda Yakubu and myself and a few others. So that was the entrance of Sister Gloria into our family and with the kind of person she is. First, they did that exercise with, for us without charging us anything. They didn't stop there. When we were coming to Abuja to say, okay, let's do the same exercise, both of them followed us to Abuja here if I remember very well, brother, and I don't know whether I still remember, we didn't give them any commission. Maybe we paid their flight ticket. You know, flight was cheap by then. They came and did all this in freely. Friends, this was the behavior, the attitude that attracted Barista Gloria, or we call, we call her then Sister Gloria, to the families of Ndaya Kuku and my humble family. And since then, her humility, care, and showing concern to others did not diminish, diminish. Since that time, till she went to be with the Lord, we have been very close, we have been related. I mean, we have been relating. In fact, all the marriages I did in my house, apart from the last one, she was always there. Now, let me say one thing about our Christian life. When we met Sister Gloria, she was a member of the household of God, is the household of love, love Christo Kote Church. And she was active in all the activities of the church. Evangelism, meetings, prayer meetings. She was never left behind. Generally, having related with Sister Gloria, what do I have to say about her? Friendly. That's what I, why, why I said, what was said here is a confirmation of a word. Friendly. She relates very well with people, especially when she's convinced. Secondly, very forthright. Gloria has nothing to hide. She will tell you the way it is. And if you have missed it, she will not even make the mistake of not being blunt. Bluntly, she will tell you. Even if you are angry, say, my brother, my sister, I've told you the truth. Sister Ngozi, I've told you. Brother Peter, I've told you. Brother P, in fact, my name is Brother P. I have told you. Very forthright. Her giving life is impeccable. I'm sure her giving life and her caring life, that's the formation of this NGO. What have I to say in the last minute? She has finished her course, just like Paul said, already. She's there with the Lord, and her crown of righteousness is already given to her. 
All we need to know now, all to do now, is to continue to pray for the family she has left behind. The children shall be successful in life. In the name of Jesus. Thank you very much. Sister Vicky. Uh, Pastor Kenny will be coming. Good evening, brothers and sisters. Um, I am this is the glorious friend, Victoria. I, I, I met her. I met her. Um, person she is. She's really caring. She's very kind. You know, when, when um, we were about to finish the Koenonia School of Ministry, she quickly thought that with the agent,
department because they interface with families and deal with a lot of issues. But she said, no, I am young. Mommy always proposed youthfulness. I am young, I'm strong. You, I'm like all of you. She would dance with us, sing with us, cheer us up, find out how we are doing and carry us along in everything she did. Praise God. I remember one time, um, um, I'm soon to get married, but I was in a relationship to someone else before I met mommy. It was mommy's encouragement that let me know that I was in a wrong relationship. Without mommy, probably without her weight, I would have been in that relationship and probably been crying now in marriage. It's the truth. I remember that conversation in her house because I lived in Karimo then. And I went to her and said, I'm the HOD of this department. I'm in a relationship with someone who is not here. But I'm not used to crying. I've been a man all my life, but I'm crying. Although the lady is from her own part of the country, mommy assessed the situation and said, you are in trouble. Alaba. She's your sister. She said, leave that one. You are in trouble. And I thank God for these are personal things. But just to know the extent of the counsel of mommy's lips, you could trust her. Indeed, she was a Nathaniel in whom there was no guy. The Bible says, for me to live, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. I believe it now because of mommy. Thank you. short of words I don't really know where to start you know mommy Gloria you know two of us coming together is 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 God honestly that orchestrated our meeting it was when I came to Abuja you know during our school of ministry was here you know I think that was the first meeting a few minutes into our conversation we just bonded you know I turned after I greeted her you know I told her that I missed the orientation and all that. So she just joking, you say, hey, this girl, you never started, don't they miss class? So I was like, mommy, see what happened. You know, I didn't get the message and all that. So we discussed and you know, she came for the orientation. She said she didn't come with the note that she would bring in the next class. So just that few minutes, we became you know, so close as if we've known for years. So there was one time she didn't come for class. I chatted her. I said, what happened, mommy? I didn't see you today. So she told me she went for, you know, check up in the hospital. So what was happening? It just chatted me, you know, what she's going through that period and all that. I was like, wow, this, this is what you're going through. And you come here, you know, most of the time before everyone. Sometimes if I didn't come on time, she would call me on phone. Where are you? You know, she has gotten seat for me already. She keeps seat for me if she comes before me and call me, where are you? You know, start coming, we're about to start class. You know, so she, she's, um, <laughs> she's a God saying, you know what, what, what they, they said, a burden bearer. Mommy is a burden bearer. Because I know when I came to Abuja, I don't know anybody. So I believe God just put her to be a family around me. Because many things I pass through and all that, when I meet her, I will tell me, don't tell your family about it. Don't let them know because they won't, they won't, they won't feel all right. In fact, they won't understand what you're going through. So she's every, she's my confider. So I always go to her when I tell her, I say, just rub my bag. You know, we're so close as if, you know, I won't even believe it. Just barely two years that I, we met, you know, we connected and it became this so strong. So she's, she's a loving soul. She's a caring person. You know, most of the things said here in her biography is more, more, more deeper. She's deeper than that. She's, um, <laughs> honestly, honestly, mommy, she's an angel. She's an angel. You know, I believe heaven is rejoicing over her. Thank you. 
thank you. This is Mrs. Caroline Yakubun. Last year, December, just before we traveled out for Christmas, she came to the house and told us that she wanted to have a retreat. And Daddy and I said to her that we will not be around and um, nobody is going to be in the house. She said she will manage herself. I said, my Siki, Nobody is going to be at home because at this point she was already ill but she said she needed that time to be alone and she did she came and stayed unfortunately two or three days into the time she came into the house her condition changed. And our daughter, Mrs. Table, had to send us a message that Auntie Gloria is quite ill. And um, Your body is strong. Your spirit is alive unto the Lord. She said yes. She kept declaring God's word. And we kept declaring God's word. Honestly. Incredible. 
That Saturday as I entered, I told her, I'm not going anywhere today. I'm going to be with you. And uh, was there for the entire day. I just stepped out and came in. Sunday morning, as soon as Daddy and I finished our devotion, I just jumped and went straight into the room. Because at this point, there was no position that was comfortable for my psyche anymore. She was just restless. And I said to her, do we go to the hospital? She looked at me and she said, do they even know what to do? And we kept declaring. She was hitting her body. My body, you must align with the word. My body, you are healed. And she just kept declaring God's word. But at this point, that morning, her voice was no longer as audible. And she said to me, I want to take back. I dashed quickly down brought the pap, gave it to her. Gloria took that pap as if she knew she was going. She took more than she would have taken and she just pushed the tray, which was unusual. She just pushed the tray to me and said, I have had enough. And I said to her, my sick, you have even tried. I didn't know you are going to take this much. And we sat there and we were singing. I, I, I saw her struggling to breathe. I went into her bedroom. I broke down and I wept. I said, Lord, behold your handmaid. Do a miracle. Do a miracle. I finished crying, I came back to her and I decided to play um, this song. And I saw my Siki, she raised her hands like this and she was singing the song with me and I was like, God, show mercy. And after that, She just became more restless and she kept declaring God's word. I actually was supposed to go off to the school for the blind to minister for the Fellowship of Christian Students that Sunday morning. And I, I, she said, are you not going? I said, my sicky, I can't go and leave you like this. I said, I won't go. I will stay. And I called one of our brothers, Jonah. I told him, I said, I won't be able to minister to the students today, please I have a patient in the house and that was how he took the message as I was there with her sitting by her bedside she was declaring God's word and she was just going and going I adjusted her back she kept declaring God's word and she was going. I had to adjust her again. Her knees came in from Kano and we were together. Eventually, as I sat, I sat with her on the bed. She, she just, she just did. And I told her knees, I said, it's over. She said, no, it can't be. Maybe she's sleeping. And she was so calm. She was so calm. I just took my hand and I closed her eyes. And I told her niece, let's adjust her properly. But Gloria was a fighter. For me, her faith in God 
in spite of all that she went through it's a living testimony it's a challenge to me that she could she fought she stood and fought death and refused to deny the Lord she confessed God's word until the last moment my Siki of the most high you are there in glory we will meet again thank you Chichi. thank you ma'am right the media just for two minutes First thing in the morning, we're on the phone. Later in the day, we're on the phone. In the night, we're on the phone. We never stop praying. You are a prayer warrior, my sister. My sweet sister. Kind-hearted, good heart. Respectful. You are a beautiful, loving soul. It pained me. My heart was broken. When I got the call that uh, you passed on, but uh, God love you more. We love you here. Well, our Maker, our Redeemer, He has the final say. You've gone to be with Him. Now you have peace, peace of mind. You don't have to worry any longer. No more pain. No more sorrow. You're a good young woman. You've been such a wonderful, lovely, sweet sister to me. I can never, never forget you, my lovely sister. You are the best thing in our life. You're the baby. Or you the shining star of the family. You are a darling. You are my sweetheart. I will miss you so much. I still cannot believe it that you're gone. What we're doing, we, we're celebrating your life, my darling sister. We're not mourning you at all. We're doing the celebration of your life. I want everybody to know how lovely and amazing sister you are. You are a blessing to anyone that comes across your way. Everywhere you step your feet in, you blessing. And you, you've got help. You've been helped. You're a woman helped by God, like you always say. Because when I asked you, how are you feeling, my sister? You said, oh, God is helping me. God is helping me. God is my strength. God is everything. You live your life righteously. You are a beautiful, loving soul, my sister. What else can I say? about a sister that does things effortlessly. Even when you were so sick, you were still moving. Moving, doing stuff. Doing stuff for yourself. Because like you told me, you said, my sister, once I have the strength, God has given me the strength, I will do stuff for myself. Because life is for living. Even when you were in the hospital, you showed me, we did a video call, you showed me, say. My sister, look at me. I put on my makeup. The devil can go and hang. You see? Satan can go and jump into the ocean.
Hallelujah. Sorry we have to cut the video. It's a bit lengthy. Amen. We, we are going to take the next hymn. And after the hymn, um, Pastor John Paul will be coming over for the message. Amen. Please can we rise. Hallelujah. We're singing in Christ alone my hope is found. Are we ready? Let's sing together. One, two, sing. In Christ alone my hope is found.
Good evening, everybody. Once again, let's appreciate God for Hallelujah. Father, we thank you tonight for the gift of life and the blessings of good health. Thank you for the life you had lived through our mother, our sister, all these years of our life. We appreciate you, God. We give you the glory that is due your name in Jesus' mighty name. And once again, let your word find practical expression in our life tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Tonight is a privilege for me to stand here. And I don't take it for granted. I want to appreciate everyone that is here on the behalf of our Father in the Lord, Apostle Joshua Selman. I also want to appreciate my HOD, Pastor Kenny. Welcoming everyone here tonight, family members, friends, colleagues, business partners of our mother, our auntie, our sister, Mommy Glory. You are all welcome in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for taking out time to pay probably your last respects of the life she has lived here on earth. And our prayer is that when our days here are over, men will gather this way to celebrate what God has done through us here on earth. In Jesus' mighty name. Very briefly, we'll be sharing a talk tonight. Uh, where do we go from here? That's the title of my brief charge. Where do we go from here? Is a question. And it's a question we'll ask ourselves. We don't expect you to answer tonight. But it's a question each and every one of us is expected to take home, including myself. Where do we go from here? From where you are seated, all of us have plans and aspirations. Mommy Glory had plans, even for next year. But it pleased God to call her home when he did call her. The question tonight is, where are you going to from where you are? Praise the Lord. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse, from verse 6, Paul the Apostle, he said, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. Paul knew where he was going from where he was. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at, the, at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Paul was so sure of where he was going to. He declared that he had fought a good fight. How do you know if your fight is good? Why still alive? How do you measure if you have kept the faith? Why still alive? One of the ways to answer this question is to ask yourself, where am I going to? When you wake up every morning, where are you headed? What is our pursuit? What is our passion? What is our motivation? What do we rise up every morning to pursue? In the book of Genesis chapter 37 verse 15, Joseph was sent by his father to go and look after the welfare of his brethren. And a man found him wandering in the wilderness. And that man asked him a very powerful question. He said, what seekest thou? Oftentimes, when people pass on to glory, we gather like this to celebrate what God has done in and through their lives. But you see, as much as 
it is because of our passing on that we gathered here tonight. Everything, about 90 something percent of everything happening here tonight and that will still happen after this meeting is for those who are still alive to learn lessons. Even Jesus Christ, <laughs> the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, got to a point in his ministry and life. In Matthew chapter 16, he met his disciples and he asked them in Caesarea Philippi, he said, who do men say that I am? I, the Son of Man, am. We must come to a point in our life where we ask ourselves sincere questions. This thing I run around every day, at the end of it all, who will men say I am? So many things have been said about our mother. And for the most of them I know of, they are all true. It's not, it's not, it's not a, uh, something we are doing just because somebody has passed on to glory. We must speak something nice. She is everything that has been said about her and even more. To everyone that has spoken, and to those who did not have the opportunity to share testimonies about her. As we are seated, including me standing here tonight, who would men say that we are at the end of this race? And that is why it is very, very important for us to narrow down our pursuit or begin to narrow down our pursuit to things that really matters. What attracts your attention when it's mentioned? Is it God? Is it mundane things? Is it position? Is it career? All these things are important. Career is important. Like you heard from all the testimony, she was a career woman and she did excellently well. But above all, she was a seeker of God. Even till her dying day, she was still in church. We saw her on a Sunday evening. She came for service. And the week that preceded her being admitted in the hospital, she was in church, serving God, pursuing after God. Praise the Lord. Many people would have been offended in God, having served God from the days of her youth, did all the things she did in her career. Some other person would have been wallowing in regret and complaining. God, is this how you would repay me for everything I've done for you? When she was supposed to settle down in quotes to begin to enjoy the, the fruit of her labor, that's when God called her home. But yet, like you had our mommy testify, she kept speaking the word of God. Amen. You see, it is in the days of adversity that we know who you are. She kept speaking the word of God because that is what is in her insight. She kept addressing her body. So it is a lesson for us that are still alive. How do I manage situations like this? How do I manage crisis? How do I talk in the days of adversity? Where will my confidence lie? Is it in my achievement or in who Jesus Christ is? She kept speaking the word of God because that is what she is made up of. Praise the Lord. Philippians chapter 3, as I attempt to close. Philippians chapter 3, from verse 12. Not as though I have already attained, either we are already perfect, but I follow after if that I may apprehend, for that which also I am apprehended for Christ Jesus. Verse 13, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. What are you doing with the life that you have now? Are you pressing towards the mark of the prize of the high calling in God or you are busy chasing after mundane things that will be burnt by fire on the days of judgment what are you doing with the life that you have 
Where are you going from where you are right now? What is your passion and pursuit? What are your interests on earth? What attracts your attention when it is mentioned? Is it marriage? Is it money? Is it career? Is it contracts? Is it appointment? What attracts your attention whenever it is mentioned? Or is it Christ? Philippians chapter 1 verse 21, Paul declared, For me to live is Christ, and for me to die is gain. Question, will our death bring gain to the body of Christ? Or loss or shame to the body of Christ? What would be our gain when we die eventually? What would men say about us when we eventually die? In conclusion tonight, I leave us with these two statements. It is not about what we drive on earth, but what drives us. What is driving you? It is not about what we own, but who owns our soul? Question, who truly owns your soul? Is it God? Or is it money? Positions? It could even be positions in church. Like our Father and the Lord used to say, Apostle Joshua Selman, even ministry can occupy a place in your heart bigger than God. Praise the Lord. These are our thoughts tonight. And I believe that this will go a long way in making us like the preacher says, it is good for us to go also to the house of mourning, much more than the house of celebration. Why? Because there is wisdom. You return sober and it helps you to think through life and know that whatever you are today, whatever you will become tomorrow, whatever you stand to achieve, there's always an end. At the end of it all, who owns your soul? Let's bow our heads in prayer. Speak to God in your seated position. Speak to your creator. Let him know who truly owns your soul. Commit your heart back to your father. God said, my son, give me your heart. What shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Lord, I commit my soul back to you. I refrain from this life that I'm living presently that does not bring glory to your name. Help me to trace my way back to you so that at the end of the day, I will declare like Paul, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. So help me God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Can we rise for the
my soul. I'm going to be calling on a pastor in our midst, Pastor John Oricha, to pray for the family of our beloved sister. Very briefly, can we make welcome Pastor John Oricha? Thank you all for coming. I'm grateful for this privilege. We've been sitting down for quite some time. I think it's not out of place. We just rise to pray. We're not praying for her, but for the family, the children. We've seen the sister in the U.S. We pray for her. And then the three children, Peniel, I will give you their names so you mention their names. And before we pray, there is a very sad note in the Bible about a man of God that served God with all his heart. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 12. This man served the Lord. But here's something. Now, the sons of Eli were sons of Belial. The reason, they knew not the Lord. May our children not carry another son name when we are still alive in Jesus' name. In that or in life, may our children, people we have raised, not carry another son name in Jesus' name. This must have the law. And the children were so named sons of Belial. Not sons of Eli again. And the Bible stated the reason they knew not the law. Second scripture we used to pray Isaiah chapter 8, verse 18. The children the Lord has given unto me shall be for what? Signs and wonders. So one is to pray that. Her children will not be called sons of Belial. Second prayer point, they shall be for signs and wonders. Very simple prayer point. So you're going to call the names after me. The first is Peniel. Everybody say Peniel. Hear the word of the Lord. You shall not carry another son name. You shall not be son named as a son of Belial. You shall be called the child of God. Therefore, this day, in the name of Jesus, we severe between spirit and soul whatever attachment, whatever bond has taken you away from the ways of the Lord like the prodigal son return to your father return to your God in the name of Jesus second name of the second uh, boy is uh, Beulah and then Hallel Peniel, Beulah and Hallel call the three names and pray the same prayer father in the name of Jesus they shall be for signs and wonders. Peniel, Beulah, Helen, in the name of Jesus, you shall be for signs and wonders. In the mighty name of Jesus, we disconnect you with every spirit that is not of God. In the name of Jesus, on this day, we release the grace of sound covenant, sound understanding. In the name of Jesus, you shall walk in the pathways of God. You will not walk in the ways of the sons of Belial. In the name of Jesus, no. In the name of Jesus, you shall be for the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. The sister Victoria Crawford, you saw her, and the brother is a pastor in Lagos. So let us release the grace of God to sustain them at this time. That God should build a wall of fire around them and also grant them the spirit of comfort at a time like this. No words of man can comfort them. It's the great comforter himself that can comfort them at this time. Father, in the name of Jesus, we release your grace upon Victoria Crawford. 
and our brother that is a pastor in Lagos. Sustain them, Lord. Keep this family. In Jesus' glorious name we are praying. Father, the wonderful legacy that our sister has left behind shall not be lost in Jesus' name. Her wonderful testimonies, Lord, shall be multiplied over the children and the family members in the name of Jesus. The light of God will not be extinguished in this family in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' glorious name. Thank you, Pastor Richard. Please, I'd like to call on somebody, uh, one of our late sister classmates, class of 1988, leave the deed, um, law school together. Please, I'm going to be giving you just two minutes because we are already out of time. Ma, please, you can come over. Our pastors and elders in the house, good evening, brethren. My name is Rita Machazoka, me, Rita Michelia. Thank you for this opportunity to say a few words on behalf of the law class of 1987 to 88. We feel we should make our presence known at both the Lagos event and Abuja event and have planned it like that on our platform. So I stand here on behalf of the law class of 1987 to 88. We were in law school together with Barista Gloria. And she had proved to be a wonderful cosmate. She was of good report and friendly to all. She was active in activities of our bar class throughout the years. And she was active as a professional. In fact, she was one of the vice presidents in the Ikeja branch of the MBA in Lagos. She was wonderful. At uh, the last class reunion we had, which was last year, November, after the bar convention, we were all together with her. And on our platform, everybody expressed surprise because she was very active and lively. We didn't know she was battling so much with cancer. Although personally, I shared a few words with her and she shared challenges of health and she tried to get me interested in her cancer foundation but I didn't know the end was near. So on behalf of MBA class of 1988, I want to express our deep condolences to the family, the church, the friends and loved ones of Barrister Gloria and Weze, our departed classmates. May the Lord comfort us all in Jesus' name. Thank you, ma'am. For the vote of thanks, I would like to call on Elder Ndaya Kubu. Praise the Lord. Just to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you first to God Almighty, who connected us to this beloved sister. Um, for God's sake, if not be Christ, Waiting, connect, no pay man and an evil lady. If not Christ, Christ can do all things mysterious. And that's the relationship. It was Uncle um, Peter Aroge that dragged her to me, and we became closer to her than Uncle Peter Aroge. And I dragged her to my wife, and she became closer to my wife than myself and than Peter Arogi. We thank God for this mystery of divine connectivity which cannot be explained ordinarily. So tonight I just want to thank this commission headed by our dear brother Apostle uh, Selman. Uh, please extend our warm regards to him. He was personally involved with us when we met here earlier in the week. He wanted to be there for us to plan this program. And he was around. Brother Kenny, Pastor Kenny, Uncle Kenny, 
Thank you so very much. And your heads of departments that were involved. Pastor John Paul, thank you. The Lord reward all of you. Your protocol department, your security department, your media team. The Lord reward each one of you in Jesus' mighty name. The Koinonia family, you are wonderful people. Can I see the Koinonia family here, especially the prayer department? Can I please stand up? Wonderful. God bless you. What did I say? What did I say? God bless you and bless you and bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you very much. It's a wonderful family. You have impacted her. She told me, please sit down, please sit down. She told us everything you did. Even while she was in the hospital, you were taking turns to sleep with her in the hospital. She reported, every, she reported everything to us. The Lord Almighty will water you in Jesus' mighty name. Each one of you. To our AIC family, ACS family headed by the principal AIC, principal ACS, we are very grateful. The Lord reward you. Uh, dear family members, Uncle Peter Arugi, Pastor Oricha, Uncle Steve, and all others, we are very grateful. To our immediate past pr uh, principal, Mrs. Abaga, the one and only Mrs. Abaga, and Pastor Abaga, thank you so much. We are grateful. Uncle Bade and many others. I didn't know Sister Rita, you were in the class of it. It. Thank you. Please, a uh, warm regards to your team members. I call your class a special class. The Lord reward you for coming. So, whatever, can you just turn to the other person? God bless you. Say, God bless you well. Say, God bless you very, very well. May God help us to number our days and apply our hearts to wisdom. Pastor Kenny, thank you once again. The Lord reward you. We are proud. The media people, thank you so much. Brother, thank you. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Please, can we be upstanding as we pray? Permit me to call Reverend Chris Abaga to pray for us as we close. Thank you. Let us pray. Father, we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. We thank you for the life of our late sister, Barrister Gloria, Gloria Mweze. We thank you for her humility, her brokenness, her consecration. We thank you for the life that she has touched. We celebrate you, my father. Lord, we ask that as we walk out of this place, that your presence will continue to abide with us. We learned tonight that she's a great fighter. My Father, my God, whatever is ahead of us, teach us to war, teach us to pray, and teach us to fight. Thank you, my Father, for the victory of the cross. Blessed be your name. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let the grace in fellowship the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now forevermore. Amen. Please, you can just pick something on your way out. A refreshment is blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you all for coming. The Lord bless you. Do have a wonderful weekend. Thank you.